<laughs> What's up? So I'm prepping for a training class I'm about to do next week, and there's gonna be a huge range of, of students in the class, or a class is everything from real basic, somebody, people coming from Rhino, to more advanced, people that use alias that need to either understand or get closer to class A modeling. So I don't really know what to expect. I've, I've got an agenda, but I'm just getting all of my ammo, just in case things come up in the class. Anyway, so I'm gonna practice ball corners and I've got this real simple example that I've, I got from Barry Kimball from Autodesk and he's an amazing user. He was my mentor back in the late 90s and I've always seen him as somebody to go to um, yeah for just some of the best content. Let's go ahead and turn off my zebra stripes here. There we go. And we're gonna practice with the ball corner and then we're gonna manually build a ball corner so you can really see the mechanics of the surfacing to make these types of transitions. Let's jump right in. So I've got three fillets and these are tiny, tiny fillets. And when you have small fillets, I think these are one millimeter, you don't need curvature and we can have debates about that, but seriously, a one millimeter fillet doesn't need curvature. So we're going to do this from tangent just to learn the, the idea of this. And then um, it all applies to the curvature stuff as well. Um, so I'm going to use ball corner and let's go ahead and just kind of reset this. Yeah, cool. And just to show these are all three by what? Six. But the important part is this is third degree in the arc direction of this fillet. And we want our geometry as simple as possible. I'm always striving to build uh, Bezier single span geometry. There's a lot of benefits to that. And um, yeah, so that's just kind of how I, I work. So the ball corner tool, you want to select the three fillets and then select on the fourth click, you want to select the, the surface that the fillet is going to flow along. Um, so in this case, it would be the upper surface. And as you can see, the ball corner created, what's that, tangent all the way around but we have all of these isoparms. So we just wanna come in and turn on explicit control. Three by three, let's go ahead and turn on our CVs. And that looks great, awesome. So the tool worked out perfect. Uh, nothing, we don't have to make any adjustments for that. And so for down here, similar, we have three fillets coming into this corner. Um, ball corner, those three. Select that bottom surface as, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, I just learned this. This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen and I can't believe they do such a terrible job explaining this. This happens to all of us, right? The tool fails, you look in the prompt line, four intersections found, select exactly two intersections, arrow markers to define blah, 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 blah. What? I didn't know this until I didn't realize it really meant you can select the arrows. You just click on the arrows, hit go, and then it will work. I would always go back, exit the tool, extend negative to make them smaller, and then go back through it. This is so much better. Very important. I just learned this. Amazing. So um, this isn't great. You know, see how this like flares out? So we really want, we want to bring these in. And you can see there's a proxy, right? And um, yeah, so we just want to bring it in somewhere. Cool. Whatever it is, we want them to flow. And there's our ball corner, right? And we'll just trim things up here. Cool. Awesome. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I don't have those built. So here, let's just hide that. So there's our ball corner. You know, I don't want to go trim everything else out. Um, yeah. All tangent, these are tiny, tiny um, fillets. So that's how you would do it manual or with the ball corner tool, perfect CV layouts are pretty close to perfect. Now the big one is down here in this corner and I've got another layer. So we're gonna start with this one. Um, let me just see. Yeah, okay. So we have these, let me get rid of my old one, perfect. Sure, awesome. 
So we have uh, this corner here, and we're gonna do this manually to really go through this situation. And I think you learn a lot from building these things manually. I used to have my students do corners all the time, all manually. Every CV you would have to move on your own to get it, because you learn so much by going through and understanding what the tool is doing for you and how it's calculating those things. Um, I think it's just a, a very important lesson. So what we want, we're gonna have the biggest thing, most people, and I'll just use the duplicate with interactive turn off, or sorry, turn on, and what that does is it will allow me to place a curve um, directly onto the surface, right? And note what it did, it placed the CVs exactly on top of the halls, right? It's derived from the surface, it makes sense. But the lesson here, and I'm gonna go to how to blend this in just a second, the lesson, whenever we wanna match a curve to the surface, we wanna match the halls. Place the CVs where the halls are and your transitions will happen, will just be that much easier. Now, most people will try to approach this tool like this, right? And they have a square, a perpendicular edge off of this point. And this just becomes an absolute nightmare. Like, I've done it. it doesn't work out. Um, the continuity in this corner is just horrible. You can never win. So what you've really got to do is you want these things to flow, right? That's your ideal situation. And this situation could be great for the blend curve, or I'm just going to use the align tool. And I'm going to align that to our fillet, and I'm gonna have it set to UV so it flows along the fillet. And here, let me just turn this on. And like I said, whenever we wanna match the surface, we just wanna have the CVs placed right where the hull is, right? Something like so. And then for these guys, I'm gonna use the align tool as, not that, I'm gonna use the align tool along the edge, I'm gonna use vector uh, normal, and that will allow me to drag it. And notice how that second CV stays lined up the whole time, right? So that's, that's pretty cool. And um, yeah, something like that, right? We want this to flow off, go that direction. Yeah, that's cool, it'll be fine. If it's not, we'll just adjust it later, no problem. And uh, then I'm gonna, what I wanna do is I want a natural boundary for this fillet. So I have to cut this fillet, this is what a natural boundary is, and I want it to match perfectly that curve. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go to my Trim Convert tool, 3D trimming, project, normal, normal to the surface, and I want this surface, that curve, keep that spot, boom. Have match originals on, let me just create a, a layer, L7, and uh, yeah, so now I have a surface that ends perfectly where that curve was. That's, that looks awesome. Very nice. And um, my, my curve doesn't match absolutely perfect, but shh. So there's a good start. And we've already done that to this side. This flows is tangent with this, uh, the flow of this surface. So that's good. I'm gonna come in with an edit point curve, third degree, set it to three. And um, just like before, just snap, snap. Now again, this could be a great spot for the blend tools or the blend curve if you use those. I don't use them all that much, but after watching Barry do this, um, I might start. It's pretty impressive. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna align this one with that guy. So now it's tangent. And this one with this guy or girl. And we want to match the surface, right? What do we say? We want to match the CVs to the holes of our fillet. So let's turn off our shading and uh, go into our align tool and we'll just make it something like that. That looks pretty good. Hit activate. We'll just place that there and we can sight down something like that. Oh, this one. You know, take your time, try to get it as close as possible. Uh, hello? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, sweet demo, dude. There we go. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so now it's 
pretty close. We'll go with that, and if it, we'll tweak it later, whatever. And now we could trim convert this, um, but for right now, I'm gonna just leave this as is at the moment. Uh, we'll turn off these surfaces. I'm just turning off the controls, and we're going to align this outer curve, and we want these to have like some nice flow. So I'm gonna say, let's pull that one in a little bit. And then this one, we're gonna flow off of here. And so we'll wanna end up probably in that region. We'll tweak it later, no big deal. And so we have our four edges and uh, I'm gonna hide this surface or template it at the moment. And we're gonna go to the square tool and let me just ignore this, ignore this, ignore that. And we'll select our surface, our curve, our surface and our curve, and we'll build something. Right now it's all positional, so one and three, we'll make those tangent. And you can see that we get a, a um, isoparm, and I could probably make some adjustments, but I'm just gonna switch it to uh, explicit control, and that tells it exactly what parameterization I want. So I want three by three, the simplest possible way of making a tangent blend on all sides. And the cool part about the square tool is typically right here, continuity options, collinear. On boundary one, we want boundary one to be collinear and that lines up the CVs nice in a row with our input surface. And we'll want three right there. So that looks cool, awesome. Now remember, we used we only have curves on our outside, and the around the fillets uh, is to blending to the surface. Now check this out, and this is where some of the manual control comes. And I'm going to turn these CVs back on, turn off our shading, just as I said that these this CV really needs to be lined up with that hull in order to be tangent. And so I'm gonna use this transform CV tool and spacebar allows me to select the options and I just want to slide. Now this will break the history of our square, no big deal. And I'm gonna select this arrow and as long as I slide, here, let me turn down my mouse sensitivity, as long as I slide in this arrow, this will remain tangent, right? And so I'm just gonna line that up. I'm just eyeballing it, not worrying too much about it at this point. Something like so, right? That looks pretty good. And then this one, we don't want zigzags, no crazy CV structures. Always nice and smooth. And yep, we're gonna need to push that one down a little bit more, something like that. We'll adjust that here in a little bit. We just wanna make sure these are nice. Yeah, that's what we want. Same thing here. No, 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 no. Grab it, just manually pull it in. Just get it to blend nice and pull that over. Let's hide our curves because we don't want to get confused so we can really see what's going on here. Hide all that stuff for right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to project normal to that surface and then measure the tangency. No tools! I didn't align it, I didn't ask for a tangent with the square, but by placing the CVs in line with the hull, bingo. So we'll just trim that. Let me bring up my big surface here and I'm just gonna project normal for all of these. Whenever something is basically laying on top of another surface, I always use normal. And did I, oh my goodness. <laughs> What's going on? There we go, project normal. I was selecting, okay. It's been a long day. And we'll grab that guy there, trim. Let's check our tangency. Ah, oh, no, no big deal, right? We know, now we know how to adjust these. And right now we're 0.11 degrees off. That's super close. And so what I'm going to do is, let's just guess. I'm just gonna grab this one. I'm watching the comb. Winner. And you know, we could come back in here. We could move this one even more to get our shape back. And if we do that, we'll wanna do that one. Whatever, it's 
close enough. Hide it, shade it. Manually blended those, right? And it's tangent, right? So it's not perfect, but for a one millimeter fillet blending along there, the idea is perfect. It's, it's how you approach it and the, the way that the CVs are placed is very important. And if you take some time to learn how to place the CVs, you don't even need to use the align tool or the square with tangent. You know, we can do a lot of these things manually, have a lot of finesse and a lot of control. And that's really what's the difference between a design model and a model that's class A or ready for production. Very controlled CVs, everything has purpose and reason. And um, yeah, and so those are the things that I do for my automotive clients. These are the types of lessons I'm gonna teach next week um, during the class. So yeah, thanks for, if you made it this long, I hope you learned something, um, these tools, and are just amazing. So, awesome. Keep surfing. Peace. Oh yeah, camera sucks. <laughs>